updated on, um, you know, the enemy who's still uh, busy at work trying to destroy the children of Israel. All right. Um, so tonight what we're going to do is we're going to specifically speak about the technology of the beast, the military of the beast, and the weaponry of the beast, which is ultimately going to lead to the mark of the beast. All the things, all the devices the beast has in place to eventually have you engulfed or encircled into accepting its mark. All right, so uh, last week we talked about the hurricane and the typhoon that took place in the Philippines. And I have an article here. I'm going to read it. This is uh, dealing with the weaponry of the beast and more in particular the weather weaponry. This comes off of PressCore.ca, uh, dated November 15th, 2013. And it reads, U.S. wages war against Philippines using its HARP weather WMD systems or weapons of mass destruction systems. It says here, the U.S. military sea-based X-band radar was ordered to set sail out of its berth in Hawaii on March 23, 2013, on what the United States Department of Defense claims to be routine sea trials. However, in light of recent events in the Philippines, Typhoon Haiyan, Microwave data from the devastated region gives evidence that the SBX-1 was ordered deployed by the U.S. government, Barack Obama, to the Pacific to complement other U.S. military-controlled steerable phased array radar systems, PARP, in Japan to wage war against the Philippines using HARP's weather modification capabilities. The SBX-1 was deployed for geopolitical purposes as a U.S. military-controlled weapon of mass destruction, an act of war. The SBX-1's active electronically scanned array radar is mounted on a Russian-built fifth-generation CS-50 twin-hold semi-submersible drilling rig designed to function in the type of adverse conditions often encountered in ocean operations. The SBX-1 was built for one purpose, weather modification, which was revealed in the U.S. Air Force report titled, Weather as a Force Multiplier, Owning the Weather in 2025. The HARP SBX-1 C-based platform complies with a directive from the Chief of Staff of the U.S. Air Force to build upon weather modifying concepts, capabilities, and technologies that the United States can use to remain the dominant air and space force in the future. Presented on June 17, 1996, this report was produced in the Department of Defense School Environment of Academic Freedom and in the interest of advancing weather-modifying weaponry related to national defense and geopolitical purposes. The U.S. Weather Weapon of Mass Destruction System, called HARP, has been fully operational since Hurricane Katrina, 30 years ahead of schedule. A steerable U.S. land-based X-band radar system, Cobra Dane Phased Array Radar System, was already built in northern Japan by the United States military and has been operational since 2006. And a second Cobra Dane installation in central Japan came online just prior to Super Typhoon Haiyan, the strongest windstorm ever recorded being formed at sea and steered into the Philippines using HARP, uh, a, a missile phased array radar beam triangulation. Advanced technology microwave sounder and satellite weather radar 
data from the Pacific region detected two stationary land-based microwave hotspots and one slow-moving hotspot at sea. The HARP SBX-1 is a slow-moving sea-based X-band phased array platform, giving evidence that the U.S. military created and steered Typhoon Haiyan using three HARP systems. The two land-based systems in Japan and the seafaring SBX-1. Using three-phased array radar systems drastically improves the angular resolution of the emitted microwave, steers the microwave beam with pinpoint accuracy. Another U.S. military-controlled HARP installation was available on Guam, the Cobra Dane installation pictured in this article. The SBX-1 and the land-based systems are all part of the U.S. Missile Defense Agency's ground-based mid-course defense project and performs a vital role in the ballistic missile defense systems. The SBX-1, the land-based systems, and the orbital X-37B are all illegal weapons of mass destruction. All are banned by the Environmental Modification Convention Treaty an international treaty prohibiting the military or other hostile use of environmental modification techniques having widespread, long-lasting, or severe effects. It opened for signature on May 18, 1977, in Geneva, and entered into force on October 5, 1978. All right, so we, you know, the statement was made that this was a harp produced storm at first sight. Um, it's not hard to pinpoint these disasters anymore because of what's happened in the past and the information that we have available to let us know, uh, you know, how these events occur. When you have a storm of that magnitude, the strongest storm ever recorded. And it's aimed at a demographic of people who we know are the, who we know make up uh, the children of Israel, primarily the tribes of Naphtali. Then we understand that this is beast warfare against the children of Israel. So, whereas before they were having a hard time putting military in place in the Philippines and getting certain political uh, agendas. Uh, to pass there, now with this storm, they have opened up a door to where now the military can come in and, and what is looked at as a soft invasion, basically an invasion to where the people now will accept the military to come to help and save the day. So now you have a martial law type uh, event and a martial law type atmosphere and environment to get people more comfortable with being around military. All right, Luke chapter 21, verse 20, lets us know that when you shall see Jerusalem compass with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. So when we see the children of Jerusalem compassed or surrounded with armies, know that they're bringing the, the desolation of abomination, and meaning they're coming for onslaught and destruction of the children of Israel. Now, you, you have a high level of idolatry that also goes on in the Philippines. So, at the same time, if we are not following the Most High, we're disobeying Him, we are under the curses. So, these type of events and disasters can definitely take us down. And it's the reason why you've seen such a high level of death. You had so many thousands of people die with this storm. And think how many people are displaced now, how many people... Or will probably end up sick and, and possibly die from starvation or sick. You look up, now you have the Red Cross coming in, which is the Red Shield or the Rothschild. Red Shield means Rothschild. So now you have the Rothschilds coming in through Red Cross to bring in their vaccinations, their GMO foods, all the abominable things uh, that they are physicians of no value to bring to the children of Israel. Now, I want to read a scripture here since we'll definitely be talking about this chapter. 
going to go ahead and get this scripture. Revelation chapter 13. Revelation 13. Now, when you read Revelation 13, it talks about two beasts, one that rises up out of the sea and one that rises up out of the earth. The first beast rises up out of the sea. We know it's talking about the ancient Roman Empire. All right, so Revelation 13 and 4 is talking about the ancient Roman Empire. And it says here, And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? So understand, under the ancient Roman Empire, at that time, it was the greatest army and military the earth had ever seen. We know that Esau, or Edom, was blessed with the art of war. We also know that the Romans uh, make up the race of Edom. So understand that this was then that nobody could make war with the beast. Well, fast forward to today. Now you have the ancient Roman Empire on steroids with America, with the greatest military uh, the world has ever had greater than the, than the ancient Roman Empire. Because now, you look at look at the, the military that America has during ancient Rome, they didn't have airplane fighter jets. They weren't able to drop bombs on people. They weren't able to rev up heart machines and cause weather warfare to where, you know, you think it's nature, as they would call mother nature, or just natural disasters. Now, they can... They can take you down and make you think it's just natural when it's them behind it the whole time. So if this was ancient Roman, Revelation 13 and 4, and who can make war with, war with the beast, think about who can make war with the beast now in today's time. It's the reason why you can't stop America and what it does through its military and weaponry of the beast all right, if you drop down to verse 13, Revelations 13 and 13, which is talking about America, the second beast that comes up out of the earth, it says, And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. So understand, the first beast wasn't able to do this. Ancient Rome was not able to make fire come down from heaven. It wasn't able to drop bombs, nuclear bombs. All right, send in drones shooting, shooting hellfire missiles. So again, America is ancient Rome on steroids. Uh, Ephesians 6 and 12 tells us, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So now you understand they have satellites in the skies, space stations in the sky that can do attacks from space. They have airplanes and helicopters that can attack you from the skies. Spiritual wickedness in high places, chemtrails. How do you fight against these things in high places? How do you fight against harp, weather warfare? And, and that's the reason why Paul goes into the next verse and says, Take upon you the whole armor of the Most High, so that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. So if we're not taking and putting on the full armor of the Most High, we cannot stand against this spiritual wickedness in high places because we, we can't fight it with flesh and blood, meaning we can't fight these things physically. Spiritual war that we're fighting here. So we must equip ourselves spiritually. We must put down the idolatry. We must put down all the wickedness that the world has taught us because this is spiritual wickedness we're talking about here. We must put it down to be able to withstand all of these devices. 
All right, so I just wanted to, to put that out there so as we go through, tie all this together. All right, now moving forward to the next article. This comes off the FBI's website, FBI.gov. FBI, starting in January, is going to have across the board 50 states that will have what is referred to as its next generation identification. And this is going into the technology of the beast. All right, I'm going to read some parts of this website so that you can understand what this means. Here's their vision. Driven by advances in technology, customer requirements, and growing demand for integrated automated fingerprint identification systems, services, the FBI has initiated the Next Generation Identification Program. This program will further advance the FBI's biometric identification services, providing an incremental replacement of current IAFIS technical capabilities while introducing new functionality. NGI improvements and new capabilities will be introduced across a multi-year time frame with a phased approach. The NGI system will offer state-of-the-art biometric identification services and provide a flexible framework of core capabilities that will serve as a platform for multimodal functionality. A full and open competition was used to award the NGI contract to Lockheed Martin Transportation and Security Solutions. This multi-million dollar contract will consist of a base year and the potential for up to nine option years. So it talked about this platform having a multimodal functionality. We talked about last week the drone that was multimodal. This was a transformer drone that they're developing that has the ability to to fly in the air. It can dive into the sea and transform into a sea drone. And then it can get close to land and transform into a land drone. So a transformer or a multimodal drone. So here it is, this next gener generation identification system by the FBI is a multimodal functionality-based biometric platform. So let's read about some of these biometrics that they are incorporating within this system. It says NGI will be the cornerstone that enables CGIS to meet its growing and evolving mission and continue to build its reputation as a global biometrics leader. NGI program mission and goals. The NGI program office mission is to reduce terrorist and criminal activities by improving and expanding biometric identification and criminal history information services through research, evaluation, and implementation of advanced technology within the IAFIS environment. So they're using the uh, they're, they're using the actual made-up, fabricated uh, agenda of terrorism and also criminal activities because America has the highest prison population of the whole world and only makes up 5% of the world's population. So through this so-called, quote-unquote, terrorism and criminal activity, they're using that as a a premise or a pretext to now say, okay, we need to put biometrics in place to be able to identify these terrorists and criminals. It reads, its goals are as follows, public safety and national security. So they're saying we're going to do this for your safety and for your security. Next, biometric leadership. So they want to show that they're the leaders in biometrics. Third, efficiency improvements to show that they've improved with their efficiency with this technology. Privacy and data protection. So they're promising you privacy and 
the protection of your data, which we know is a lie because this whole system that they are implementing is a surveillance system. And fifth, smooth trans smooth transition to make everything run smooth. It says NGI is a collaborative effort among the Bureau, the, CJ, the CJIS Advisory Policy Board, and members of the Compact Council comprised of local, state, federal, and international representatives. Drivers and requirements, flexibility, capacity, accuracy, response times, additional functionality, interoperability, availability. All right. So the NGI capabilities, number one is quality check automation, basically saying that they're going to, to bring good quality with this system, being able to do things faster, more efficient, more smoothly, less error. Number two, interstate photo system enhancements. Uh, with this particular point, they're saying that now they'll be able to easier identify people through facial recognition, whether it be tattoos, scars, marks, they'll now be able to easier identify people through facial recognition technology. Number three, disposition reporting improvements. All right, so this basically is going into options that will include the electronic submission of disposition data via the interstate identification, basically being able to share information across a broad spectrum of of different consumers or whoever is using this system, connecting it to federal courts. Four, advanced fingerprint identification technology. This will provide faster, more efficient identification processing, increase search accuracy, improve latent processing services, and allow for seamless searches of 10 flat fingerprint impressions for non-criminal justice purposes. All right, it says here, um, it's going to provide law enforcement and partnering agencies with rapid mobile identification services to quickly assess the level of threat that an encountered individual poses. So basically to be able to easier and quickly identify threats using a minimum or uh, using a minimum of two or a maximum of 10 fingerprint images flat or rolled risk currently conducts an automated search against limited population of approximately 2 million records. All right, five, enhanced IAFIS repository. All right, so this will improve the overall effectiveness of the IAFIS, develop new and streamline existing internal user processes, and provide new search and response services to the FBI's customers. Six, uh, uh, real quick, number five, it says this repository will provide the submission of IRIS data, provide retrieval capability, provide IRIS search capability, and provide IRIS maintenance capability. So now IRIS scans, to be able to scan your IRIS, because again, all of these are biometrics. All of these are things that are that are unique to each individual. No two people are the same. And the beast understands and knows this. Six, FBI National Palm Print System. The NGI program will include the capability for the IAFIS to accept, store, and search palm print submissions from local, state, and federal law enforcement and criminal justice agencies. The National Palm Print System will provide a centralized repository for palm print data that can be accessed nationwide, providing our customers with an additional tool to solve crimes. So you got fingerprints, you got facial recognition, you got iris scans. You have now you have palm prints, multimodal biometrics. 
So it says the future of identification systems is currently progressing beyond the dependency of unimodal, for example, just fingerprint, biometric identifier towards multimodal biometrics, for example, voice, iris, facial, etc. So they're moving out of the old system of just being able to identify people through fingerprints to now we need more biometrics, voice, iris scans, facial, palm prints, and your fingerprints. The NGI program will advance the integration strategies and indexing of additional biometric data that will provide the framework for a future multimodal system that will facilitate biometric fusion identification techniques. The framework will be expandable, scalable, and flexible to accommodate new technologies and biometric standards and will be interoperable with existing systems. Once developed and implemented, the NGI initiatives and multimodal functionality will promote a high level of information sharing, support interoperability, and provide a foundation for using multiple biometrics for positive identification. So what they're saying here is that if we're able to get all of your biometrics, we can be more accurate with identifying people. There's, there's less room for error. This is how they're selling it. All right. Um, so there's a little bit more on that site, but more so designed toward the stakeholders, privacy cons uh, considerations and things like that. So if you want to check that out, you can go to the FBI.gov, it's on the FBI's official website, and see exactly what they're doing with this system. And again, this is the technology of the beast, biometrics, whole uh, agenda to be able to control you is it must be able to identify you, it must be able to track you. And this goes into... Let me get the scripture here. Uh, one moment. When the scripture in Revelations 13 talks about the mark of a man and the number of a man, all right, the mark of a man is these biometrics that we're going into because everybody has their own unique biometrics. So it's more so of putting you into a, a web to trap you and to track you. And it's the reason why you're seeing all of these surveillance lawsuits popping up left and right because the cat is out the bag now. It, it's fully aware that through the NSA and through all of these spy programs that America has, that it's spying on its citizens and has been spying for years, is to further condition you and get you used to the idea that you're being spied on, you're being tracked, um, and you're being, uh, you, you have surveillance on you 24-7. So the beast can know exactly who is worshiping him and who's not. Because you are to be worshiping the image of the beast. So it's got nothing to do with terrorism. It's got nothing to do with criminal activity. Per se. Those that keep the commandments and faith of Christ will be considered terrorists and criminals. That's where, the, where they'll shift that from. So it's got nothing to do with the terrorists and criminals they're talking about now. It's got to do with those future terrorists and criminals that they will eventually change the narrative over to. And, you you know, you see these things, you think, man, this is straight out of a movie, straight out of a science fiction movie. But the thing of it is, it was never science fiction. It was real the whole time. It's just the technology is just now being shown to you what they've always had. Because now they're even, they're even further advanced with their technology. The beast technology is even 50 to 60 years more advanced than what we know. So you would think, okay, with all of this going on, Shouldn't there be somebody, you know, fighting back or pushing back against against this? Well, there was a article that came out on RT.com. It says FBI sued over secretive facial recognition program. 
June 28, 2013. So you would think, okay, well, if this is such a great program, and this is for our national security and public safety, then why is this so secretive if it's so good? Because Christ said, let your, your work and, your, and the things that you do be done in the light so that they can be seen before men. Why is everything so secretive when it comes to the FBI, the CIA, the government, all the agencies that surround it? All right, so you had a a nonprofit organization, Electronic Frontier Foundation, that filed a a uh, a actually are suing the FBI for its inability to comply with multiple Freedom of Information Act requests filed last year. So this group has been asking for the FBI to comply with the law, and the FBI has basically just said, we don't have to, or, you know, we're not going to. So they can break the law, but if you get caught jaywalking, you know, you're going to get a ticket or you can go to jail. All right, so it just goes to show you the beast, who can make war with the beast. All right, so it says, let me see if there's anything here we want to go into. It says, um, Anything we haven't read earlier um, on the previous FBI's website as far as this is concerned. All right, so it's it's pretty much going into the same information that we just read, but just the fact that this group is suing them. Now, the ultimate goal is for the FBI to transition this technology out of the uh facial recognition, fingerprints, iris scans, over to and, and moving everything over to voice and being able to uh, track you by your voice is another reason why they have the, the all the cell phone companies, Verizon, AT&T, getting slapped with lawsuits, listening in to your phone conversations. Because now, through voice recognition, they can now track you just by you speaking. They, they don't need your pictures. They don't need your iris scans or your fingerprints. All they need to do is hear your voice because it's a lot harder to disguise your voice than it is to uh, to, to disguise yourself. You can always put on a, a, a you know makeup or cover yourself up, whether you put on a hat or mask or anything. You cover yourself up, but with uh, voice recognition, you may not even know that your voice is being you know, uh, monitored, even if you did want to try to cover it up. Um, so that's what it's moving into is voice recognition. And then that way, if they are monitoring phone calls, they don't need, you know, they're not going to be able to see your face on a phone call. They need to be able to know, okay, whose voice is this talking? Put it in the voice database and we're going to pull up who this person is talking. Or if you're out and, and, and they're, you know, you're in a crowd, and they can't maybe get a fix on your face, then they'll be able to pick up your voice. They'll be able to, you know, uh, hone in and pick up your voice out the crowd and know who you are. That's what this particular system is moving into. So it's all about moving into a bigger, better, and faster uh, biometric system. All right, now speaking of biometrics and going over into voice, um, which is equally as important as going past the biometric point, because once they have your fingerprints and your iris scans and all of that, they have that in. Now they need more. They need your voice. Now going the next step past your voice is going to be DNA. So it. Here's an article of RT.com. It says, Texas drivers pulled over at random, told to turn over blood saliva samples. Passed. November 20th, 2013. It says, dozens of Texas drivers have been stopped at a police roadblock where they were then directed into a parking lot and forced into surrendering blood, saliva, and breath samples in a study that has upset civil liberties advocates. So you see how they always 
get you with the explanation, well, this is a study we're doing. Well, what type of study are you doing? That's the question I would have for somebody that wants to take my blood or my saliva at a routine traffic stop, roadblocks. You don't need my blood or my saliva because they want to they want to get all of this in a database. It says the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration admitted it was attempting to conduct a government study meant to determine the number of drunk or drug-impaired drivers on the road at any given time. So we've talked about the terrorists. We talked about criminal activity. Now the excuse is drunk or drug-impaired drivers. We need to see if you've been drinking or if you're drug-impaired. That's the pretext for them to take your blood and saliva. That's what they're saying. There's a quote here. It just doesn't seem right that you can be forced off the road when you're not doing anything wrong. Kim Cope, who said she was forced to the side of the road while making her way to lunch, told NBCDFW.com, I gestured to the guy in front that I just wanted to go straight, but he wouldn't let me and forced me into the park parking spot. The tests were made even more mysterious when reporters alerted to the situation by concerned drivers were unable to find any officers in the Fort Worth Police Department who had been involved. The NHTSA only admitted its involvement after local media sought answers. So again, they hid themselves and acted like they weren't involved in any of this until the media brought it out. The department, which says its mission is to save lives, prevent injuries, and reduce vehicle-related crashes, crashes, maintains that participation in the research was completely voluntary. But Ms. Cope said she felt trapped during what seemed to be an investigation. Trapped as in maybe like a web, how you would be trapped in a spider's web or a net so she felt trapped and felt interrogated in an investigation. So they, they'll, they'll come out in the media and say, oh, it's just voluntary. No, they're coercing you into doing this and intimidating you and making you feel that you're guilty when you haven't done anything wrong. So this study now, because once they have your biometrics, they now need your DNA so they can know who is of the seed of Jacob? Who is of the seed? Because they, you can't judge by outer appearance. You can't just look at somebody and say, okay, this person's black or, ha or a person of color or this race or this particular nationality or this lineage. It doesn't work that way. It's all based upon DNA. So this is the, the, the next step past all of what we've gone through so far in biometrics is DNA. Uh, it says here, she said, I finally did the breathalyzer test just because I thought it would be easier, the easiest way to leave. So she felt that in order for her to leave and make it easier, she went ahead and did the breathalyzer test because she felt that if she didn't do it, they would never let her go. So if it's just voluntary, then why would you feel that way? Why would you feel like I just want to leave, I just want to go, and you would submit yourself to that? It just doesn't seem right that they should be able to do any of it. If it's voluntary, it's voluntary, and none of it voluntary. Because taking the mark of the beast is not going to be voluntary. Of course, they make you, they tell you it's voluntary. Oh, Obamacare is totally voluntary. If you have insurance already, nothing to worry about. But that's not true because people that have insurance are getting their insurance canceled. These insurance companies now are being absorbed by federal insurance. So now you can see how the beast is going to cause all rich and free, rich or poor, great and small, bond or free to accept its mark. This Just through this type of slowly sucking you in and entrapping you. 
All right, it says, when pressed, the Fort Worth, Fort Worth Police Department said it was reviewing the actions of all police personnel involved to ensure that FWPD policies and procedures were followed. The NBC affiliate was able to determine that the Pacific Institute for Research and Evaluation, a government contractor, was hired to conduct the check. An NHTSA spokesperson admitted Similar programs were being conducted in 30 other cities throughout the U.S., but Civil Liberties attorney Frank Colosi does not accept the rationale. You can't just be pulled over randomly or for no reason, he said. They're essentially lying to you when they say it's completely voluntary because they're testing you at that moment. He added that drivers who refused may have been targeted by police for inadvertently giving the impression they were operating a vehicle under the influence. So basically, if you if you basically are trying to get away from this situation, then they're going to say, okay, you must be guilty. Why are you trying to run? Why are you in such a hurry to leave the scene? You see how, they, how, how the beast operates? And they're using law enforcement. They, they, they try to use the law. To justify this, because you you feel intimidated just being around a police officer, just because you know what a police officer may or may not do. So you already feel a certain type of way around police, especially if, if you are people. All right, we don't want no parts of the police, even if we totally haven't done anything wrong. You feel a certain type of way being around police. All right, it says here he also told NBC that fine print on the forum told drivers their breath was being tested by passive alcohol sensor readings before the consent process has been completed. So that they have, they have the technology already in, in place testing you, test your breath just by you speaking to the police officer. So you're already being tested, you see, without even them doing anything and injecting anything or putting anything in your mouth, anything. You're being Tested just by speaking. So how is this voluntary? This oddity comes just months after Texas state troopers were caught on video con conducting vaginal and cavity searches on female drivers at the side of the road. The videos quickly went viral and attorneys for the women filed federal lawsuits against the troopers. It's ridiculous. Peter Schulte, a former Texas police officer and prosecutor, told the New York Daily News earlier this year. I was a law enforcement officer for 16 years, and I never saw anything like it. And the reason he never saw anything like it, because we are now in the age of the mark of the beast. We are now in the age of the technology of the beast. And it in, in being invasive and invading your space, wanting to know everything about you. We talked last week about Google, how Google is a search engine platform set up and strictly designed to know everything it is about you based upon um, what you like to search for or what you browse the Internet and do or say. Now Google has has taken it to another level with YouTube to now where it's integrated Google Plus to where now if you sign into YouTube and you want to comment, you need to have a Google Plus account to be able to link in so they can now further link you in with people and know who's communicating with who and who's down with who because, again, it has to be able to identify the the remnant of the woman's seed that's keeping the commandments and faith of Christ and the children of Israel, even those that may not be following the truth. The fact that they are potential threats, that at any moment they can wake up and become a threat to the system, makes them a threat. All right, because you come up to somebody, you start sharing information with them. They may be feeling a certain type of way, like, you know what, I always felt something wasn't right. Or maybe down the road, 
you plant the seed, and then later down the road, it hits them. So there, you're, if you're a children of Jacob, you're always a threat to the system. If you're a speaker of truth, even if you're not a children or a child of Jacob, you're a threat to the system, and the system has no use for you. So that's what this is all going into. Just for those that may not understand it, we are here. We are in the age of the beast and its mark. All right, now let's move to the next article. This comes off of WashingtonTimes.com. It says here, GOP to tattoo Obamacare disaster on 2014 Democrats. It, and this is dated um, Thursday, November, 20, November 21st, 2013. It says here, Republican National Committee Chairman uh, Rince Priebus vowed Thursday that his party will tattoo Obamacare on the foreheads of vulnerable Democrats going into next year's midterm election cycle. Now, I want to stop right there because I don't want to read any more of this article because it's going into the part that is the stuff you can throw out. The politics. We don't need the political part. This is an occult. This is an occultic, subliminal message for the elite. They are communicating subliminally, and only those that have the eyes to see and ears to hear are going to understand what this means when they make a statement like this. Now, there's only three words that you should take out of this article, and the rest you can throw in the trash. Those three words are Obamacare, tattoo, foreheads. Those are the three words that that are being thrown out as buzzwords or keywords to tie in what this is all about, what Obamacare represents. Let me read the scripture. Revelations 13, verse 16. And he causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. All right? So if you understand this scripture, then you'll, you should be able to put two and two together to know that inside the Obamacare, um, within its literature, RFID or a class two radio device, implanted in the skin. We know that's in Obamacare. We've been talking about it for years, several years. That's one. Two, this particular government official is talking about tattooing Obamacare on foreheads. So, again, they're putting it right in your face subliminally. They do it through Congress and the government when they have all of these these government debates and meetings and whenever they speak, their speakings, they do it in movies, do it in TV shows, they do it in music videos, they do it in sports, all forms of entertainment. There are subliminals being thrown out there. So I wanted to bring this, this article out to show you how they'll throw that out there, but then they'll come in with a bunch of government political madness that's got nothing to do with anything to completely throw you off from the, the real message that's being conveyed with that statement. And they do the same thing with movies. They'll fantasize a movie when the movie is putting the truth right in your face. All right, so if you read this article, you really don't need to, need to read the article, statement that was made, and, and throw the rest out. Obamacare, tattoo, and foreheads. All right, now we have, let's see, 
about halfway through our um, our news. We we'll take a, a real now. Let's talk about now that the beast is putting these measures in place to be able to track you, to be able to trap you. We're going to go back to Revelation 13. Because what if you don't want to be tracked? What if you don't want to be trapped? What about those that fight back? What about those that aren't with whatever the beast is telling them to do? You know, whatever they're implementing and instituting for you to like, you know, whether it's following these pagan holidays or, um, you know, having a certain type of status in life, you know, what if you don't, what if you're not down with any of that and you just want to live a simple life, you want to have your own land and have your own garden and, and not be any dependent upon anything that they're giving out? What about these people? Revelations 13 and 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So for those of us that want no dealings with the beast when, when it comes time for separation and even up until the separation, the beast is going to have those people hunted down to be killed. How is the beast going to accomplish this? Well, we already know that they have surveillance and biometrics in place to be able to track you, identify you. That's the one of the you know main reasons uh, to have that that in place is to track those down that are going against the beast. For those that do worship the beast, their reward will be the mark. They will be able to take the mark to show their allegiance to the beast so that they can continue to operate within the system of the beast and continue to chase after that image and to continue to wonder after the beast. So, so what is the beast going to use to come after those? Let's see. This comes off the telegraph.co. It says, Terminator-style self-assembling robots unveiled by scientists. And this is dated October 7, 2013. It says, Known as M-Blocks, the cube-shaped robots have no external moving parts, but each contains a flywheel that can reach speeds of 20,000 revolutions per minute. When brakes are applied to the flywheel, it imparts its angular momentum to the cube, causing it to move. Each M block has two uh, cylindrical magnets mounted like rolling pins on each edge. When two cubes approach each other, the magnets rotate so that north poles align with south and vice versa allowing any face of any cube to attach to any face of any other. By climbing over and around one another, the cubes can assemble into different shapes. So just real quick, what this technology is basically allowing the possibility for is in the event that a machine loses a limb or any you know part of it, that it can quickly come back together. It can just quickly, its arm fall off, its arm can come right back and go right back in place. And you kind of have to go online and look and view the video of this to kind of kind of see how it works. It says, as with any modular robot system, the hope is that the cubes can be miniaturized, according to the researchers. The ultimate aim is to create hordes of swarming microbots that can self-assemble like the liquid steel androids in the film Terminator 2. So again, you thought the movies were science fiction, Terminator and all the other movies that they have out? Well, think again. 
their mission is to have this technology to be exactly like Terminator 2, where the liquid steel, if it gets shot off or whatnot, it can come right back together like nothing ever happened. It says, in the nearer term, however, the researchers believe that a more refined version of their system could prove useful even at something like its current scale. Armies of mobile cubes could, tempor could, could temporarily repair bridges or buildings during emergencies or raise and reconfigure scaffolding for building projects, for example. So that sounds great, right? And if it was to be used for that, that would be a, a, a great thing to be used for. But we, but we know it's not going to be used for that. That's, again, another pretext or another um, premise to throw out there to get you to accept it and say, oh, yeah, that sounds cool and, and helpful. We need something like that to get you to accept it. It says they could also assemble into different types of furniture or heavy equipment as needed. And they could swarm into environments hostile or inaccessible to humans, diagnose problems, and reorganize themselves to provide solutions. And the vast majority of other modular systems, an individual module could not move on its own, said Kyle Gilpin, postdoc at MIT's Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. If you drop one of these along the way or something goes wrong, it can rejoin the group. No problem. Meanwhile, Hod Lipson, a robotics researcher at Cornell University, described the M block as a low tech solution to a problem that people have been trying to solve with extraordinary high tech approaches. They showed several modes of locomotion, not just one cube flipping around, but multiple cubes working together multiple cubes moving, other cubes, a lot of other modes of motion that really open the door to many, many applications, much beyond what people usually consider when they talk about self-assembly, said Lipson. In an ongoing work, the MIT researchers are building an army of 100 cubes, each of which can move in any direction and designing algorithms to guide them. We want hundreds of cubes scattered randomly across the floor to be able to identify each other, uh, co coalesce and uh, autonomously transform into a chair or a ladder or a desk on demand, said MIT research scientist John Rom uh, Romanishan. So these are the creations that the beast is putting into effect the ability for self-assembly because we know that they have the drones we know that they have the robots but what in the event that gets damaged so now they're looking to make it to where you won't be able to destroy these uh these machines they'll just come back together like in the movie terminator you can shoot it you can hit it you can do all these things to it and it'll just come right back together like nothing ever happened. So this is the technology that the beast is putting in place to help it fight against those who are opposing the beast and refusing refusing to worship its image and take its mark. Last week we talked about the Transformer drone. All right, so this, we have a drone article here. Let's talk about more military and weapons of the beast. Solar drones to stay aloft for years at a time. And this comes out before it's news dot com. October eighteenth, twenty thirteen. It says even as the debate continues over the scope of drone warfare and surveillance, significant upgrades continue as the drone industry booms. Now, let me ask a question. Why would the drone industry be booming? You see how it's, the drone industry is a booming a booming one and on the rise? Just like how Terminator was called, I think, what, Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines? 
Recently, we have seen the Navy successfully test autonomous drone takeoffs and landings at sea with Boeing, while Boeing has begun to retrofit its decommissioned F-16s into pilotless fighter jets, meaning that these drones are now showing the capability to think for themselves. They have their own brain power, their own way of thinking, just like in Terminator. When the machines took over, they started to develop artificial intelligence, and eventually they took over and waged war against people. So that's what uh, is, is also undergoing with this technology, is for machines to be able to think for themselves. They don't need people to control them. They can do whatever they want to do. This trend toward a future of autonomous fleets of large-scale war fighters is developing in tandem with the trend toward miniaturization and the mimicking of nature itself to hide each drone tech in plain sight. The latest developments focus on ways to not only get new drone models aloft via remote control or through their own autonomous decisions, but how to keep them there for as long as possible, perhaps even permanently. Okay, if I'm running from one of these drones, I could just wait it out, and it eventually will have to go back and refuel, but not with the technology they're coming up with. These drones can fly and never have to land. It says, toward the end of 2011, a program called Music was made public and revealed the goals of future combat systems, essentially a network of ground-based and sky-based systems that could communicate and operate as a seamless and permanent intranet of war and surveillance. Since that time, the technology has been, made, has been publicly rolled out demonstrating the capability for drones to stay aloft for increasing periods of time. This was revealed in a drone industry report provided by Aerospace and Defense News covering plans for 2013-2023, where it states, Laser-powered UAVs are powered by a laser transmitter, which converts power from a primary source, such as a battery, generator, or AC power line, into a single wavelength beam of light. These UAVs are capable of staying airborne for their entire life cycle as this method of recharging avoids the need to land and refuel, which may also improve the life cycle and maintenance cost as much of the damage incurred by UAVs occurred while landing. So not only will these drones be able to stay in the air forever, but now they don't have to worry about being damaged by landing or being repaired or being down. It is important to note that these drones eventually will be equipped with the latest in biometric capabilities, namely facial recognition, as was announced in the following Associated Press article. So here we go with biometrics again. So it's not just the FBI that's using biometrics. Now the FBI can work with these drone programs and these drone manufacturers and controllers to have these, these, these aircraft now have the ability to identify you through biometrics. And that's the reason why they need it in the database so that they can monitor you from the air, from the skies, where you have no idea these, this spiritual wickedness in high places. It says, from seeing just the image of a face, computers will find its, its match in a database of millions of driver's license, portraits, and photos on social media sites. And that's another reason why these social media sites are now using facial recognition. The reason why they want you to upload your photos. And when you upload a photo, it can identify everybody in, the, in your friends list or maybe not even in your friends list. It'll say, is this such and such? If they have a Facebook account, it'll identify that person in your own picture that you just uploaded. So they're all working together. It's all, again, a net and a trap 
to trap you in the system. Reading on. From there, the computer will link to the person's name and details such as their social security number, preferences, because, of course, using Google, it's going to know all your preferences, what you like, hobbies, family, and friends, because these social networks gather this information, too. They know who your family are. They know who your friends are. They know what you like and what you don't like. Adding that capability to drones that can fly into spaces where planes cannot, machines that can track a person moving about and can stay aloft for days means that people will give up privacy as well as the concept of uh, anonymity. The fact that what used to be conspiracy talk is now openly discussed in corporate media as we head toward a full implementation of drones over the U.S. by 2015 is likely not a coincidence. By 2015, we're, we're, we're nearing the end of 2013. And we're going into the last two years of Obama's term as president. So you know they have to get this thing really, really ramped up within the next two years of a lot of things happening. You know, I, I don't see any other president or any other guy coming in and replacing Obama. It's just, it, you know, Obama's the 44th president. That he's hit the high Masonic number of 44, the occultic number 44, which is the number for Saturn or Satan. And nobody's ever been able to do what he's done. So they had to, they had to have this thing going before the election time, even though the elections are a, a total sham. But they had to put it into the eye of the public. They had to have a reason why the election process has to stop. And, and they they have everything in place to bring about that exact reason that the American people, that the American sheeple will accept. Here it says, with this as the backdrop, there have been some recent announcements in the area of solar-powered drones that bear watching. And here's my thing. They're willing to invest and put money in the solar-powered drones. But why not put money and invest more into solar-powered homes and solar-powered buildings to where you don't need electricity? See, they'll put the technology for where it benefits them. But for where it benefits you, they can't do that because they lose control. Now you can be self-efficient. You don't need their electricity. You don't need their electricity companies. You don't need to pay that money. See, they need to keep the slaves on the plantation. They need to keep the slaves, continue to wean and suckle off the beast in the urban, you know, urban areas, the inner cities, you know, close to the beast. They don't need you out away in the suburbs and in the, in the countryside where you can self-sustain. Low-income housing, Section 8, food stamps, all these social programs come in to the inner cities if you want this beast aid. It says, CBS News recently reported that Titan Aerospace, let's look at that name, Titan, Titan Aerospace has developed its Solara line of drones which can fly continuously for up to five years. So so Titan Aerospace letting you know who is in charge of these drones, the Titans, the Nephilim. All right, Esau. Esau, whose habitation is high in the clefts of the rock, who exalt himself like an eagle, because an eagle can be miles up in the sky and can see you clearly, but you can't see it. That's the vision of an eagle. And these eagles have facial recognition and biometric technology and are equipped with weapons. It says the largest Solara will be 60 meters wide and have the ability to carry about 250 pounds. Cruising speed for the Solara is about 65 miles per hour. 
and the unmanned craft will have an operating range of over 2.8 million miles. The Solaris series are designed to be a fraction of the satellite, but operate many similar tasks such as surveillance, crop monitoring, weather and disaster oversight, or any other monitoring that low-altitude satellites track. Titan Aerospace is based out of New Mexico, and a report from Breaking Defense finds that the defense and intelligence customers, such as the CIA, NRO, and NGA, are the most obvious interested buyers. So So the CIA wants these drones. The company has reportedly held preliminary talks with intelligence agencies about the use of the Solara aircraft. The Solar concept is also being offered as the next gen tech to be applied to already existing micro drones that are designed to mimic nature. In May of this year, I covered the announcement of a 3D printed drone called Robo Raven that utilizes 3D printed components to produce a first of its kind, independently flapping wings. The new version of Robo Raven features solar cells added to its wings. Because RoboRaven's large wings have enough surface area to create a usable amount of solar energy, the team decided to incorporate flexible solar cells into them. The captured solar energy is is then used to supply RoboRaven's onboard batteries. These new multi functional wings will shape the future of robotic birds by enabling them to fly longer, farther, and more independently because they will be getting their power from the sun, says uh, ME PhD student Luke Roberts, a member of the Robo Raven team. As noted by Ars Technica, The concept of solar-powered flying machines has existed since the late 1970s. So they've had this technology since then, the 70s. But just now it's being incorporated into drone tech in an effective way. And lest anyone believe that this technology is not intended for full use over the U.S., an interesting map is offered in the Ars Technica article linked above showing the range of the solar drone Solara 50 uh, Solara 50 Ours concludes as follows Titan already has customer reservations for the first 3 of its Solara drones two of which are intended to serve as communication relays though the customer has not been identified the first will be delivered in February with manufacturing ramping up for a monthly delivery starting in April. When we begin to put these pieces together, the ones that are fully out in the open, we can look at what exists overseas for guidance as to what will be arriving in America. As we now know through the latest Snowden revelation, the NSA has been instrumental through a special division to accumulate data on targeted individuals which has been used in at least one case to kill an alleged associate of bin Laden. So everything they're doing overseas with these drones, they're going to be doing in America. And it's only right because you reap what you sow. It's only right that if American citizens stand by and say nothing when innocent people get killed in Pakistan and in Yemen and Afghanistan and all the other Middle Eastern countries, by these drones. It's only only right that it come back on you. Because if it's no big deal for them to get bombed, then it shouldn't be no big deal for you to get bombed or shot at or survey or so you know, to be tracked. I like to typically conclude these drone articles by showing the following two videos as they highlight the massive scope of what can be observed as in the first video and plans for expanding surveillance and killing right down to the insect and nano level seen in the second video. With up to 110 drone bases inside the U.S. having been announced, and the U.S. government still framing the legal justification for killing Americans, 
while corporate media yells for whistleblowers to become targeted individuals. We better learn what's in store for us and speak up now before it's game over. All right, so again, this person hasn't said anything about the Bible or Scripture or anything, but is putting out what we know is to come. And and you thought it was just Terminator or just the movies, but these machines and these drones are for real. So for somebody that says, okay, well, I don't think it's anything like that, you know, NDAA, no big deal, drones, no big deal. When you put them all together, and no big deal. Well, next article, Forbes.com. Campaigners call on the United Nations to ban killer robots. And this comes uh, November 13, 2013. So obviously somebody out there thinks that it's a big deal that they're starting to see these robots taking over and think that they better, you know, do something about this before it gets out of hand, as the uh, last article stated. It says here, campaigners have ramped up their calls for the UN to ban the creation of killer robots capable of making their own combat decisions without human intervention. The idea of killer robots like the Terminator or killer AI systems like Skynet that take human matters into their own hands may seem relatively far-fetched to some. But although neither form of weapon has been created yet, movements like the aptly named Campaign to Stop Killer Robots want the United Nations to take action now. The annual meeting of the convention on conventional weapons is due to take place in Geneva on Friday, and France is calling for nations to consider an international agreement not to develop fully autonomous drones, which could select and eliminate targets without waiting for human intervention, meaning that if these drones are killing innocent people all the time with people flying these drones, imagine a drone that has its own mind to do whatever it wants, there would be no limit to what it could do. The convention's purpose is to ban or restrict the use of weapons that are considered to cause unnecessary or unjustifiable suffering to combatants or to affect civilians indiscriminately. And countries will vote at the meeting on whether to add questions about fully autonomous weapons to to its slate for consideration next year. The campaign group, a coalition of 45 non-governmental organizations from 22 different countries, has called on states to take action. Governments should begin to act now to ensure that human control over targeting and attack decisions is never relinquished to machines in the future, said Steve Goose, director of the Arms Division at Human Rights Watch and co-founder of the co- of the campaign to stop killer robots. Nations need to start working urgently on both national prohibitions and an international ban on these fully autonomous weapons. The International Committee for Robot Arms Control an NGO that was a funding member of the campaign, a founding member of the campaign, said last month that over 270 engineers, computing and artificial intelligence experts, roboticists, and other related professionals had signed a call for a ban on killer robots. The experts agreed that given the limitations and unknown future risk of autonomous robot weapons technology, We call for a prohibition on the development and deployment. Decisions about the application of violent force must not be delegated to machines. ICRAC Chair Noel Sharkey, who was attending the meeting in Geneva, said at the time that countries needed to listen to expert opinions now 
It is urgent that international talks get started now to prevent the future development of autonomous robot weapons before it is too late, he warned. Although there are no fully autonomous weapons in use today, robotic weapons like drones are already being used by the armies of countries like the U.S. and the U.K. Currently, unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs or drones, are still under some human control, being piloted from the ground, for example. But campaigners believe that nations all over the world are moving towards systems with full combat control. In recent months, fully autonomous weapons have gone from an um, obscure, little-known issue to one that is commanding international attention. The the campaigner said, naming 34 states that have made public remarks about the weapons in the last six months. The campaign said that the countries all expressed concern, concern at the challenges and dangers of killer robots, and none had stated opposition to international talks on the weapons. Representatives from the group were in Geneva today to present their concerns to the UN. ICRAC Sharkey said that it was possible to stop the development and deployment of killer robots if countries could be persuaded to act now. Governments must address the fundamental question of whether it is inherently wrong to let autonomous machines make program decisions about who and when to kill, he said. Okay, so now, Revelations 13 and 15, you want to know how they're going to be able to come after those who are not going to worship the beast, its image, and take its mark? This is the weaponry and military of the beast. Terminator robots, killer robots, robots that can fly, robots that can swim, robots that can be on land and can do all of those. The biometrics that are in place to track all of your information and put it into a database to to easier identify you, to take your DNA, to get your DNA into a database to know who are you genetically so that we can come and come against Jacob as we're going to the the uh the highest part of Jacob's trouble as we get closer and closer to the return of Christ. All right, so th- there's a lot more articles that I could uh go into, but I want to save some uh, information because there's so much coming out right now with with when it comes to technology and what the beast is doing with it. And um I mean, it's just, it's simply amazing. Uh, and, and the fact that they're using us as people to further their agenda with technology, with through cell phones. Now you have smartphones, and these smartphones are tracking you. They're getting all your information, everything you do. It's, it's called a smartphone because it's it's getting information and and compiling it for all of these companies like Google into a database, into these databases. That's what that's what it's all coming down to. All right. So this tech, while while people are sleeping, the beast is is frantically and rapidly moving faster and faster every day, increasing its technology. We talked about the uh, you know uh, the director of DARPA last week, who now is the director of Google, and how Google now has the the um, it now has the, uh, the, the 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 copyrights to the the uh, electronic tattoo or the digital tattoo. Well, there's a video out there that that you should check out that was released this week. Um, the video was called "Alert: RFID Chip Readers at Walmart." The mark of the beast is here in Virginia. So now what they're doing at Walmart, which stands for martial law, and it will be a martial law hub. That's what Walmart is all set up for. Now they have Obamacare health machines, touch screens that now have RFID readers 
underneath for you to scan, eventually scan your hand, but to scan an RFID um, and for you to go through the speaking machine. You have a, a, a woman or a man that's speaking on the screen, asking you questions about your health and your family, and you're just tapping away at the screen, you know, giving it all your information, and it's talking to you, letting you know Obamacare is mandatory, and this is the image of the beast. This is the beast speaking when it says that the beast shall be able to speak. It's speaking through all of these, these different platforms, through entertainment, through technology. It, it's all around it. It's the matrix that that is, you know, has been kind of fantasized in the movie Matrix. And that's what we're in. We're in one big matrix, one big web. And um, we must escape and get out of the system and get off the grid. That's what the whole purpose of when you read Daniel chapter, I believe it's chapter 12, when the dead sacrifice is taken away. There's a time period, and it says, blessed are those that make it to this time. Those are those that will have escaped the mark of the beast and those that will have made it into the wilderness. All right, so that's what it's coming down to. Again, it's happening at such a, uh incremental pace and there's so much distractions around us that we may not recognize what's really going on because it's just as you as it becomes more and more around you at a, at a steady pace, you don't really recognize it as much. As the military troops continue to increase, the drills continue to increase, you just get more and more comfortable and complacent, complacent to it. And we we can't afford to be complacent in these times. There's no time to be complacent with all of these things happening. All right, so let's continue to be diligent. Let's continue to be focused and not lose sight of the prize, the ultimate prize, which is the kingdom of heaven. None, none of this stuff matters. So for anybody that's, you know, thinking that, you know, hey, I'm going to school to do this or understand it, it's going to come to an end one day. And when it does, you have to ask yourself, where are you going to be? Are you going to be trapped in the system or will you be looking to make uh are you preparing yourself now for when that day comes you're not too engulfed in the system to where you can't get out all right because even in the movie the matrix they they were in the matrix but then they got out they weren't living in the matrix they were only in the matrix enough to do what they needed to get done to do whatever they needed to do and then they got out and that's the same way we must do. We operate in this world, but we're not of this world. Okay, so we must use wisdom when we're operating in this world. Christ said, be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Understand how they're setting this up to come after those that are going against the beast, those that are against its image. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. 